Hey everyone, I am Ghada al from the University of Connecticut. In this talk, I will present our work on unclonable polymers and their cryptographic applications. This is a joint work with Ran Kaneki, Yaniv Erlich, Jonathan Gershoni, Tal Malkin, Itzik Pierre, Anna Reutbert Berman, and Iran Tromer. Imagine we have memory devices that are unclonable and they self-destruct after retrieving the stored data. Also, if this memory stores several messages, uh, only a few of them can be retrieved after which the device will be fully destructed. So you cannot retrieve all the messages that you see in the photo. Such bounded query memory devices can be used in many applications. Among them, we have bounded execution software known as one or K time programs. These are programs that can be run over only a few inputs, uh, which is impossible to do using software alone. Even in the quantum model, it was shown that without these special memory devices, it is impossible to build bounded execution quantum programs. Uh, this idea was first put forward by Goldwasser, Pillai, and Rothblum, who assumed the existence of simple one-time memory devices, uh, which imitate uh, the functionality of non-interactive oblivious transfer tokens, uh, which they used to build one-time programs from garbled circuits. That was an assumption without any real-world uh, realization. The only way we know to construct these devices relies on tamper proving a whole computation while assuming that these sophisticated hardware tokens resist side channel attacks and reverse engineering. So we wondered if we can build these memory devices based on minimal and better understood hardness assumptions. To achieve this goal, we joined forces with top notch and brave biologists to find an alternative technology to build unclonable and self-destructive memory devices. We do that in a rigorous way, laying down foundational modeling and analysis of the capabilities and security guarantees that we are able to achieve. We also introduce novel amplification techniques so we can use the weak and simple memory devices we build in uh, provably secure cryptographic applications. Our request was inspired by recent advances in biochemistry and engineering that allowed storing digital data in the form of DNA. So a digital message can be encoded into a set of uh, nucleotides that is synthesized into DNA material. Uh, by the way, don't worry about the biology details here. Just focus on the big picture that DNA can represent digital data and given a DNA sample, we can retrieve uh, the original message or the digital data from that sample. However, DNA evolved to be clonable. So a sample of DNA can be replicated as many times as you want, meaning that you can read the stored data as many times as you want. This led us to consider another biological polymer. Proteins also can be used to store digital data. So in this case, the digital message will be encoded into a sequence of amino acids, which are the basic building blocks of proteins. And then this sequence is synthesized into protein material. And here, the magic started. First of all, proteins are unclonable. The central dogma of molecular, mo molecular biology states that once information has got into a protein, it can't get out again. So given a protein sample, we cannot replicate it or get the genetic information out of it. This challenge is still standing for 65 years and even for billions of years of evolution. To us, cryptographers, this is a biochemical one-way function, and we know what to do with hardness assumptions. We turn hard lemons into lemonade. Another amazing feature is that sequencing a protein to retrieve the digital message is destructive. 
So you cannot get the protein sample back after feeding it to the MASPIC uh, instrument or machine uh, that is designed to read uh, proteins. Uh, also, this machinery provides an output only if the protein is pure enough. So if you feed a mix of random proteins, uh, uh, or if you feed this machine with a mix of random proteins, it will output nothing. Based on these observations, we propose a novel construction for consumable storage tokens. At a high level, as before, we take a digital message and transform it into a protein. Then we connect uh, the uh, target protein uh, with another short protein sequence uh, called header, such that this header can be recognized by matching antibodies. So knowing the header description, which can be digital information, by the way, allows identifying the matching antibodies. This header to us represents the secret key tied to our secret message. After that, we mix the target protein or the protein that represents our secret message with a massive set of random decoy proteins that are attached to different random keys. So the vial containing the mix, uh, where here in the photo, our co-author Anna is holding one, is the consumable token. Now to retrieve the message, uh, again, remember, if you just give the mix uh, to the uh, mass spec machine, uh, it will not be able uh, to identify uh, the secret protein or the secret message. Uh, this sample must be purified first. To do that, we apply the matching antibodies the, the ones that match uh, the secret header to the vial to pull down the target protein with high enough purity. Then we cleave the header and then use the mass spec machinery to read the amino acid sequence of this target protein, which will be decoded into the digital message. After months and months of designing the token, we spend more months distilling the model that best represents biology. Our goal was to require the minimum on the biology side to produce the simplest possible construction. In particular, our consumable token can store only a small number of short messages using short keys. So here we need amplification techniques in order to deal with that. Also, the only meaningful interaction uh, with the consumable token is by applying antibodies. So present a key, either you get the message uh, tied to that key if the key is correct, or you will get nothing. Also, each retrieval attempt will consume part of the vial. Even when you are applying the matching antibodies, these antibodies will pull down the target protein uh, with high amount. Also, it will pull down or consume parts uh, of the other proteins in the mix. So there will be a degradation for the whole mix. Um, in our construction, uh, we designed the token in a way that under the known technology that, uh, that is available now, an honest party will be able to perform one data retrieval query. So it can apply one key and get the corresponding message if that key is valid. But to account for more powerful adversaries, uh, maybe, I don't know, some adversaries out there may have more advanced machines that allow them to use the sample to perform multiple uh, data retrieval queries. Uh, we uh, say that, okay, uh, this consumable token and honest can perform one data retrieval query while an adversary can perform up to N data retrieval queries where N is a small integer. Also, our consumable token has non-negligible soundness error gamma. So applying an incorrect key that is close enough to one or to the correct key may retrieve or may return the, uh, the secret message with probability gamma at maximum. Also, we extended our construction uh, to build what we call partially retrievable memory. Uh, so a consumable token can store a vector of V messages using V keys. And even knowing the set of keys, uh, the V keys, uh, an adversary can retrieve only up to N messages uh, out of the V messages stored in the token. After that, 
we put our cryptography toolbox on the table and asked two questions. How to amplify this weak device that supports constant size storage to obtain powerful functionalities that can deal with arbitrary size data? And how to do that in a rigorous, provably secure way? This took us a long journey. Our first step was building a mathematical model for the biological construction. This produced what we call the vector model in which a vial or a consumable token is represented as a vector of protein amounts. We also modeled each of the biochemical procedures performed in the wet lab as an algorithm operating on this vector. Then we defined an ideal functionality for, con for consumable tokens with clean interfaces and formally showed how it is realized by the vector-based construction. Then we developed several algorithmic and cryptographic techniques to amplify the weak properties of the token and showed how to use uh, these tokens in various cryptographic applications. In this paper, we show two of these applications, uh, namely digital lockers and one in time programs. Uh, in the interest of time, I will uh, discuss these applications uh, briefly. A digital locker is uh, simply encrypting a secret message using a low entropy key or a human generated password, uh, such that uh, the, uh, and we build digital lockers that resist uh, exhaustive search attacks. So uh, an adversary can try to decrypt the messages only up to n times. So he can try only up to n password uh, guesses. Using our token, we were able to do that uh, and uh, can construct lockers that are resistant to exhaustive search attacks. And this application uh, required additional techniques to amplify the soundness error to be negligible. Uh, these techniques relied on sharing the message uh, uh, into uh, U shares and um, store each uh, share in a separate token. So now instead of sending one consumable token uh, that stores uh, the uh, encrypted or the, the secret message M, now we are sending U tokens. Also, we had uh, or we chained uh, these tokens together to enforce sequential opera operation. The latter is needed to preserve the number of password guesses to be n, despite sending multiple tokens, all of them tied to the same password. The second application, uh, one in time programs, um, here we have a secret program or one uh, that contains some secret data. A sender sends that program uh, to the recipient such that an honest recipient uh, will be able to execute the program over only one input, while uh, a more powerful adversary can execute it over n inputs. As you might realize, this is a modified version of one-time programs introduced by GKR, uh, but it is one that is based on uh, real-world weak memory devices rather than just a strong assumption. The core idea of our uh, program uh, or our construction, sorry, is to obfuscate a program containing the intended functionality F, such that evaluating F over uh, an input X requires a corresponding secret message M. So uh, the program first will check, okay, uh, do you have the secret message M corresponding to X? If that's true, it will output F of X. Otherwise, it will output nothing. Um, and uh, to, uh, what we do is that we store the messages corresponding to the domain of F in a consumable token. Uh, and remember, because now, uh, and, uh, actually this depends on having a consumable token containing uh, or storing several uh, secret messages that again correspond to the domain of the function. And now the adversary uh, can only retrieve uh, up to n secret messages from the consumable token. And so it can run this program only up to, or, or over only uh, up to n different uh, inputs. Uh, we faced a problem here, uh, uh, which is related to the weak properties of the consumable token. 
uh, a consumable token can store only uh, a small number of messages uh, denoted as Q uh, here, which means that we cannot uh, deal with uh, functions that have domains uh, or domain size larger than Q. In order to deal with functions with exponential uh, domain size, we use uh, linear error correcting codes. So instead uh, of sending one token, we send omega tokens. And now instead of mapping uh, X itself to a secret message, we first uh, um, encode X and take the code word, which is of length omega. Each symbol in that code word uh, will tell us which secret message to retrieve from each uh, consumable token. So now in order to execute the program over input X, we need omega secret messages uh, from uh, the um, uh, Omega tokens sent to the recipient. And now the obfuscated program will check that, is this the uh, set of correct secret messages corresponding to the code word of the input? If that's the case, it will output f of x, otherwise it will output nothing. And uh, based on that, uh, we can cover uh, a domain size of a q to the power d plus one, where d is the dimension of the linear code. Uh, we set the code distance in uh, a way that only invalid code words can be retrieved. So despite sending omega tokens to the adversary, and now there is more uh, uh, of protein material available with that adversary, still by, by setting the distance correctly, we can guarantee that it's still the same guarantee. Uh, only in inputs or only in code words can be retrieved and the program can be executed over only uh, up to n inputs. To conclude, uh, this work introduced an innovative real world construction of unclonable and self-destructive memory devices. Uh, this was done along with formal treatment uh, and uh, showing provably secure cryptographic applications. For uh, our ongoing and future work, uh, uh, the, the directions uh, are twofold. On the biology side, we are working on a sister paper showing the detailed biological construction along with empirical results. And on the cryptography side, um, we are refining our model, uh, strengthen, uh, models, strengthening them, uh, and we are developing more uh, cryptographic applications. Thank you so much for listening and happy to take questions. Thank you.